hello and welcome here with me today. Now, uh, what we got here is quite interesting. It seems to be uh, some kind of Frankenwatch, which means, yeah, someone put together different parts that don't quite fit together. And on top of that, the watch is not treated very well. So the case back shows clearly that it's a Seamaster from Omega. And the dial actually is an Omega Genève. Well, so something is not adding up here, but we will find out later. Firstly, here I'm um, trying out all the different functions of this watch. It has three crown positions. The first one for winding, the middle position for setting the date, and in the third position, obviously, um, setting the time. And if we go counterclockwise, we would be able to set the day, which is actually not working here in this case. Also something that is expected, some features will not work. This is a watch that yeah, looks pretty roughed up, so yeah, the, the hands don't have loom in them. There's, there's a lot of work to do here. And I'm actually happy that the watch is running itself. Here we take off this snap crown, and uh, this is already an indicator of the journey that is laying ahead of us. Let's see how it's running. Yeah, almost 200 seconds per day. Not a good amplitude. Yeah. Yeah, so opening this case is quite special. You need to press out everything to the front after removing the crown. And there you have it. Now it opens up the movement from the case. And it's a 166131, which is actually an Omega Cosmic 2000. Mm, this is a caliber 1022 with a day and date function. But there's actually still more to this assemble um, because there's the casing tube where the movement sits in and then this uh, top part. Uh, here we see it's pretty roughed up. All the edges, everything needs a polish. But first I'm gonna take off the hands and service this movement try to fix the dial situation and then uh, we'll see. Also this second hand looks awfully short to me, I don't know, maybe it's just not my taste. I can't imagine that this is uh, the right second hand, but whatever. There's also a movement ring here that is helping the movement stay in this casing tube. And yeah, how could it be differently? There's glue again on the movement. The dial has been glued on again. Here I'm loosening the dial screws and carefully trying to remove the dial, which I'm definitely not going to use again anyways. But yeah, let's just hope that underneath everything is fine. And then we got it off. And underneath we see that it actually looks quite good. Uh, there's no glue on the day discs or day disc and they seem to be fine. Here's this little spacer ring, which is keeping the dial from touching the day-date functions, which are definitely something special in the 1000 calibers from Omega. All the 1000 calibers actually enjoy quite a bad reputation, which is due to their lack of quality in comparison to the 500 and 600 calibers which can be uh, brought back to the quartz crisis in the late 1960s and the beginning of the, actually throughout the 1970s. And here all the big brands had to start producing a little bit cheaper and also they focused on quartz movement production and engineering. So there was a big focus on streamlining and downsizing the mechanical movement production, making it ultimately cheaper. And yeah, if you try to do something cheaper, then maybe the quality lacks. I still highly regard these movements of the 1000 series of Omega as excellent movements. 
which if serviced correctly, are running extremely well and also accurate for a long time. Here I'm now removing the automatics work by the way, which is pretty special in this kind of caliber because it's integrated in yeah, the movement itself and not put on top in the end. Funny enough the 1030 caliber looks exactly the same but under this cover plate of the automatics module there's just nothing. It's just only a plate to cover up which uh, I find quite hilarious. Yeah, uh, this is just um, the barrel bridge and these little three iconic wheels of which the right one is sliding held back by a little spring that is attached to the main plate. By the way, all the screws in this movement are extremely tiny. Besides for the crown wheel, I only used the yellow Peugeot screwdriver, which is the smallest one in the set that I own. I think there is a smaller one, but it's really unusual that even for the bridges, for all the stuff, you just use the yellow screwdriver. There's no other way. The screws are just really tiny. Here I almost have the barrel bridge disassembled. Also there's the click still on top that I'm disassembling here right now. And now step by step I will disassemble all the other modules starting here with a train of wheels. Everything so far looks quite good. No broken components or parts. And I think after a good service, this watch should be running pretty nice again. I will also give it a new mainspring to just make sure that everything is powered correctly. Now we're turning our sights here to the other side of the movement, the calendar works and also the keyless, keyless works. And even though all the screws are super tiny, even here in the keyless. I had great fun disassembling and assembling this movement. I don't know, it seems really well thought, really well constructed and really compact as well. It's pretty thin for what is included with day, date, automatic, everything. Still, it's Definitely thinner than a lot of movements of its kind. This is actually quite interesting here. This part is friction fit. It's driving the minutes hand on the other side. And you can get a good perspective on how small the components actually are. This is my pinky. And that's this little friction fit wheel quite small. And this here is the cover plate for the date mechanism and also the wheel that is in the end moving the day function and flipping over the day. One spring and this star-shaped wheel that is grabbing the day disc and turning it when we turn the crown counterclockwise. This is the automatic module, also very small screws. I'm just going to take it apart completely and also put it in the cleaning machine. Oiling everything, including the automatics work, making sure Everything runs smoothly and yeah, just a lot of parts in this watch, which you don't find that often if it's not a chronograph. But yeah, here you can have another look how many parts there are. 
and after a quick clean with some pack wood also to remove the glue just giving it a basic clean before putting all the parts in the cleaning machine also dipping the pivots of all the wheels into some soft wood to get rid of dried up oil and other dirt and then there's just one more thing to do getting the mainspring out of the mainspring barrel which is also really thin here this mainspring barrel the spring as i said before will be replaced in the process with a new one Here I'm placing the balance back on the main plate for safekeeping during cleaning. And then we're finally ready to put everything inside of little baskets. And then into the legendary Super Automat. Having that done and having all the parts clean, now we can start the assembly process, which at least for me starts with oiling the jewels, the cap jewels of the balance and underneath the balance, which you can see me do here under the microscope. It's always a fiddly action, everything super tiny, but once you get a feeling for it, it gets easier and easier. Also handling these springs, even though this went out here, was not a big problem to put it in later. What I'm trying here right now and just really carefully putting it in position and trying to fit it in this groove and then flipping it over. Definitely a task that needs a lot of patience, but it's also very rewarding when it finally flips over and succeeds. Here I'm installing the new mainspring, a little bit of grease then pushing in the new mainspring and closing it up. Yeah, I'm assembling the automatics work making sure everything is lubricated to reduce friction and to make everything run for a long time. I did a little mistake here and installed this big wheel the wrong way but I realized fast enough and switched it around Turned it around to the other side. Here I am already assembling this barrel bridge module, which is a little difficult because of this so called wig wag pinion which is then, uh, this is basically the backside of the sliding wheel and 
Yeah, you need something to fixate it from the back. I used Rodico for that. And then just fasten the screw once it's in place. Here now, this is the second hand that has to slide in first and is held in place by this very thin golden spring. One screw and this is then holding down the second pinion so it's not sliding out. Now just step by step putting together the train of wheels. This part here, by the way, is the hacking function. Once the crown is pulled in third position, so fully outside, this is attaching to the escape wheel and thus stopping the watch from, from turning. So you can really accurately set the time right and once you push in the crown it starts running. Putting in the mainspring and the mainspring bridge. There you saw this wick wag pinion sliding back and forth with the spring underneath. Screwing in the like three tiny wheels. And then finally the barrel bridge. Sliding pinion, winding pinion, getting grease, and this means we are already set for the keyless works. I think in total there are five springs little springs in this watch but all of them were quite easy to put in usually this is a point that is quite frustrating when they fly away and they are hard to attach hard to install but here actually this is going quite smoothly Just testing all the functions. Then oiling and putting in the crown wheel. The only screw in this whole movement that is larger than the yellow screwdriver. Here we're putting in the pellet fork, pellet fork bridge, and then we can see if everything is working correctly. Putting a little wine to the watch, a little power, and seeing if the pellet fork flips over. And oiling the jewels on the pellet fork and then turning turning it over and over so the escape wheel gets lubricated yeah i'm just putting in the balance to see if it runs and it does but then i'm taking it out again <laughs> to install the rest of the movement here this is the automatic module There's a trick to just wind a little bit to get everything aligned. Just touch the crown and give a little bit of pressure and then it fits into place. This is this friction fit small little wheel that is coming from underneath the, the wheel that is responsible for the minute hand.
And this is already calendar works. I'm not quite sure why they chose plastic parts for this. Obviously, you wouldn't want this in your watch. But on the other side, there are certain problems with lubrication and calendar works. So you have these date discs or day discs and they slide over when there's a certain friction and then they flip over. And usually it's quite hard to oil these metal parts the right way, to lubricate it, everything the right way. And here you have these plastic parts and maybe the... I don't know, sliding coefficient is just right. So they flip over perfectly. And I mean, they need to be replaced more often, I guess. But they work quite good for the function that they have. This is the tiniest spring pushing against this star-shaped wheel which is then interacting with the date corrector or day corrector and flipping over the day, the weekday. This is a German version of this watch so all the weekdays are the German short forms. And here I'm trying it and see it's still not working and I realized why, it's this part the day corrector is just not the right one and it was there in this watch before and it didn't work before but this is the right one I need for the 1020 movement the day corrector and what I had was for the 1010 so 1010 and there you can see the difference and yeah I'm just not gonna show all the steps now but I just needed to buy this this part and now you see when I'm in time setting position turning counterclockwise it just flips over the date also in second position everything seems to work which is nice was kind of sad that I mean on top of the dial that I obviously replaced there's a part that is completely not for this movement so yeah, someone didn't do a good job with this but that's also part of the fun as you know just restoring this finding out how it works and why the certain parts are in place here I'm regulating the watch just making sure it runs good and then I can install the automatic rotor, the automatic weight, the connecting wheels and screw this down so the self-winding function is given and if this spins freely I can turn my eyes to the casework because the movement is done. The top is brushed, which I'm protecting with this tape, and now the sides just needs to be polished again. Now that the case is done, there are also a lot of parts that needed to be replaced. Gaskets, glass, second hand, dial, etc. And here you can see a little overview of what's old and new.
So yeah, I found this beautiful Omega Cosmic 2000 dial, day date, and I really, I really like the color. It fits super nicely together with the white hands that I loomed, by the way. And here I'm just already putting on the hands and seeing if it runs with the dial together, and it does. Everything is setting the day function counterclockwise is working so now I can take off the crown again and probably this is the hardest part to put everything back into the case a lot of things can go wrong because there's pressure involved now that it's in the tube the crown can come back and then just making sure there's no dust and we can put the glass gasket, then this shadow ring that I got, and then putting in a new crystal. A final regulation before I put in the case back. And I'm very pleased with the result. And now just pressing in the case back with the 3D printed gasket that I could luckily do with a friend. And then just the O-ring is missing to put on the outer case that is snapping on top, like this. And then this one is finished. It was definitely a challenging journey, but a fun one. A true transformation. And I really hope that this watch is going to make someone happy for many years to come. Thank you very much for watching.